Everything else can wait. Give me your oh, I hope I'm not too late. Oh, give me your oh, Everything else can go away. Oh, give me your oh, I hope I'm not too late. Majuna Moyot. excited and you know God will be doing something new in your life today and you shout amen. amen there is such a very marvelous presence of the Holy Ghost in this place and the Lord is set to open new seasons is set to usher new encounters is short to close old doors Many of you who are here, who are tired of certain outcomes, tired of certain happenings around your life, but you don't seem to have, you know, the capacity to shift from those places into new experiences. Tonight, God will be pushing people into new experiences. I want you to pray for one minute before we take flight. Lord, open my eyes. Show me great and mighty things which I do not know of. Show me things show me hidden secrets concerning my manifestation open my eyes to that which is reserved open my eyes to the things that are sealed go ahead and cry cry to the Lord open my eyes oh God Sign out, sign out, sign out of undesirable seasons, sign out of unpleasant experiences, sign out. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. I do not know of. I refuse, I refuse to accept this as my status quo. C. 
sicknesses from 2023 are still very active in your body no I shut that season I shut that door I close that gate I step into a new surely there is an end and the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short The same enemies, the same enemies, the same resistance of 2023 continues to perfect your life. No! up yourself in your most holy faith building up yourself in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost Jude chapter 1 verse 20 and yet dearly beloved building up yourself in your most holy faith in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 it says through faith we know that the worlds are framed by the word of God your destiny can be framed by the word of God hallelujah hallelujah Please, permit me, permit me, let's address some things quickly as God gives us grace. There are people here who put in the due diligence to be hardworking, to be committed to whatever the Lord has, has given to them, whatever their hands find it to do, they do with all their might, yet for lack of of judgment lack of justice all their hard work continue to prove abortive it does not reflect the the, the dividends of hard work cannot be captured in their frame you see you are going to rebel this 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 evening and say this narrative will end in my life forever he says to wake up early sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow no this will not be my experience going forward bread of sorrow is far from me everything everything I labor for come to me and favor favor commands favor commands my results labor of the foolish wearies them all because they know not the way to the city somebody will pray tonight Lord show me the way to the city show me the way to the city I need answers for my destiny 
I want answers. of encounters welcome to Anakazo welcome to the presence of God God is going to be shifting seasons tonight he's going to be changing experiences tonight like night and day this is how the transformation will be are you set for an encounter give Jesus a big shout come on come on is that how excited you are Give Jesus a shout! Hallelujah. Please, love, exchange pleasantries with the persons by your side and be gloriously seated in the house of God. We have with us today our mother. I've had the privilege, you know, to be a benefactor of her labors in the kingdom. And it is such a privilege, such a delight to see her in our midst this evening. And Akazo with Jesus' joy, with a round of applause, can we celebrate? Mommy Koti in the house. Please celebrate her. Thank you so much, Mommy. Thank you, Ma. Come on, go ahead and celebrate, Mommy. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Our mother, um, she's the mother of our pastor, Pastor Koti. I think, uh, I think we should celebrate Mommy once more. Amen. The title of my discourse tonight is seasons 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 I'm so excited when I walked into this place and I heard the worship team singing by prophetic direction that I may not be laboring like a fool it's almost as though the Holy Ghost synergized our hearts together 
and the emphasis continues, you know, to echo and remain the same. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from verse 1, the Bible says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Please tell the person by your side, seasons. Say it again, seasons. It is important that we understand that scripture was trying to demarcate a difference between season and time. So he says to everything there is a season and then there is a time to every purpose under heaven. The word season is translated from the, um, from the Hebrew word zimaun. It is translated from the Hebrew word zimaun. It means an appointed occasion. The word translated season there is the Hebrew word zimaun. It means an appointed occasion. So maybe if we want to read it in that context, to everything under the heavens, there is an appointed occasion to everything. You know, there is a reason why we are going this path. There's a reason why we are taking this route. Breakthrough and financial freedom is the pursuit of the average man. Among the many things that we are trusting the Lord for and we use to measure progress, especially as humans, financial freedom stands very tall among them. However, it is not every version of you that is going to experience that financial freedom immediately. So although you are born, although you are given the opportunity to manifest in time first as a child, you will actually experience some measures of helplessness. You will experience some measure of disadvantages. This is not in any way actually defining your, your essence. It's not defining what you will eventually become because actually your beginning can be small but your latter end should be greatly increased. That's what scripture says. So there are different versions of you captured within different manifestations of time that has different ways and different advantages ascribed to those versions. For instance, in a baby, there is either a woman or a man, there is a wife or a husband, there is a father or a mother. But inside that baby, there is need for time to give experience to these various versions of them that would actually be a product of time and due diligence. There are things time can bring cheaply and other things, time plus diligence is the only way you can enter it. So meanwhile, as long as time is passing by, there will be some measure of transformation that will be going on just as an attestation that you have experienced this level of chronological time. If you don't put in the work of due diligence, there are other transformations that are tied to the work of diligence, to be committed diligently to whatsoever your hand finds to do that time. So if you are just experiencing time, when we come back after 25 years, maybe we'll see that your voice is thick as a man. We see that as a lady, you are all grown up. But every other transformation necessary to make you a holistic human, you can have physical growth, but be deficient in other areas of transformation because you did not maximize the due diligence that it takes to touch those transformations that you, you, you need. Now, not every chapter of your life will entertain you as a child. There are seasons where people clap for you because you are able to just number one to ten and you can read ABC and they celebrate you. But when you hit age 20 and you come around the company of intelligent people and you say, can I, can I read ABC for you guys? And they look at you at age 20. How is this an achievement? So the things they celebrate you for yesterday, it can become a cause for shame tomorrow if you don't grow. Unfortunately, the only thing happening around many of us is just a passage of chronological time. There is no intentional structure and system that insists, that continues to emphasize growth in our life. Meanwhile, 
a majority of your victory will not be because you grew biologically. It will be tied to the transformation of your mind. Have you seen very matured people that behave, behave like babies? My discourse tonight is seasons. Seasons. You see, the Lord Jesus gave a parable that I think is very important in the matter God has brought before us tonight. It's the parable of the vine dresser that a certain man planted a vine and then gave it time, continued to comb the ground, gave it the, the, the necessary nutrients and water supply that is needed for reproduction, for fruitfulness. And then the Bible says that at the season of fruitfulness, because what the scripture said here, he says, the moment the master shows up, he says, by this time, it ought to be fruitful. So there are different expectations placed on different versions of your manifestation. There are times where all God expects from you is just to continue to look into the pages of the scripture and be memorizing them. A time will come, everything you have memorized, it is demanded that it becomes evident in your life. Not just head knowledge anymore. You have become a proof of that scripture. So that you don't come to a time where you are ever learning, but never coming to a comprehension of the truth. This is the definition of this generation. Rema every day. New light every day. But the required level of transformation that makes us one with the things we have known mentally is missing in our lives. By this time, it ought to be fruitful. So, the master came in the season of fruitfulness. Remember the story of the fig tree that Jesus was moving with his disciples and a fig tree that has no business looking green because it was not time for fruitfulness. It's not time for figs to be fruitful. However, a tree, hey, maybe I will give you one illustration. <laughs> Have you seen maybe a mango tree that always creates that deception for its owners. Sometimes by January, it will just begin to look greenish un unusually. Then they will begin to say, so something is about to happen here. Amen. Now, there would have been no need, no need for Jesus to go under the tree to seek fruit. It was the leaf that evangelized. The leaf was the one that did publicity. This is the only state that a man who does not insist on transformation holistically. Physically, you will look like you have bread. Then the hungry soul, they will traffic your direction. And everybody who comes to you and remain hungry, a curse is uttered upon you. Because you have become actually a, misrepresent a misrepresentation of God to a generation. Your life does not capture what God intended. And so, since you bring shame, there will be a verdict that will come upon you for every time you are able to hypocritically attract men and don't have substance to command deliverance. I'm speaking to everybody sitting here that people normally come and meet you and say, my sister, I don't know. For some time now, I'm just going through a lot, a lot of, and they are sharing life-threatening cases with you. But you know that in the secret, you live as a prisoner. There is something about the way you carry yourself. Something about the way you dress. You have known how to adopt all the physical metrics. So it makes you look like you are one of those who can command deliverance for Jacob. But every time men come, there is nothing inside you. Brother, it will go beyond suits this night. It will go beyond biblical exegesis. You know, the apostles say, such as I have. Such as I have. These things are not philosophies. These are the things your hand have handled. It's only those things you can commit to others. When men come, and they will not come on their own, it will be your physical manifestation that must tally with your spiritual manifestation. If your physical manifestation outranks your spiritual manifestation, you will be a fraud to a generation. Say, 
seasons, seasons, seasons. Many of us are behind in the calendar of the divine. When God looks at you, there is only pain in the heart of God. Because so much has been deployed. So much resources have been channeled your way. But you have not become who you must be. Meanwhile, there is a version of you every season of your life demand. When I have given you this illustration, I will continue it. When a child is one year, two years, maybe three years, if you can get up on your feet and make some step, that is progress. The parents are happy enough that you can even stand on your feet now and be trying to walk. When they begin to try to articulate some terms and speak, the parents are happy because this is progress. But meanwhile, the moment they step into other age, from their teenage age, nobody celebrates your ability to walk. Nobody celebrates your ability to talk because those things are no longer an emphasis in this new season. This is what many people have held on to. Past results. Results that no longer hold water in the current place they are standing. Many of you by now, you should be a deliverer. You should be a savior. You should be a watchman. Keeping the watch over a land, over a people, over persons. And the heaven is refusing to clap for you. For that FCS president you are continuing to celebrate. Say they looked among many of us and they choose me. There's something about my life. I don't know why anywhere I find myself, I always become a leader. Oh God, what you are talking about is two years ago. You know there are people, when you want to see what people have built their life around, just come around them, stay around them. In one hour, their, their mouth and their tongue will betray them. People are still talking about realities, how God used them in 2002, how they were in a crusade. They remember how they lifted up their hand. What is happening now? How they closed their eyes and God opened their eye and showed them something that want to happen in 2017. Brother, what is going on now? How comes your sight no longer captures the motion of darkness for the now? Seasons. You see, if Satan traps you in your past, he has no business attacking you. You are already under attack. And Satan can trap you in your past by unnecessarily exalting your past results. You will begin to meditate on it. You will build many pillars around it. And then you begin to camp around old results. But there is the new tonight. There is the new. You see, the only way many of us will step into the new God has for us is that in a night like this, you will wave goodbye to both your failures and your success. And say, Lord, what are you interested in now? Seasons. Domiciled in every season are opportunities, are possibilities, are advantages. Different seasons have their advantages. Listen, listen, look at me everybody. It's not only you that can control outcomes. There are certain outcomes only seasons can control. For instance, you know you can be practicing irrigation farming since it's not the raining season. You can find a way to outsource water so that you can still engage the land and, and, and have a good yield. However, there is a season that has certain advantage in it. Meaning that for that season, you will not need to source water. The heaven will give you water by itself. So if a man comes into a perfect knowledge of seasons, you will build certain actions into seasons that have advantages for those actions in them. For instance, you will be blessed this night. Oh. Listen, for instance, you cannot get married anytime. There is a season that captures that reality. The greatest area of advantage you can source and labor for is to discern the advantages that seasons hold so that you can partner with them. You build your own actions into the advantages that seasons hold. Have you seen a mango? When it's unripe before, if you, if you look at it at surface level, time. the beauty of everything is captured inside its time. <laughs> oh, God will bless people tonight. Look at me. 
When you see a mango that is not ripe, it's not its time. When it arrives as its time, you will see the real intent of the designer. If you rush before its time and plug it, you will have a very negative opinion of mangoes. Because the mango is not bad, it is you that did not align with time. There are people who have a very negative experience with certain individuals. You meet a lady, ask her out. Both of you walk in rebellion to the ordinance of God dated out of the context of times and seasons and then you got hot in, in manners that kept you bedridden for months and when you finally came out you came out with a philosophy you say never trust women <laughs> you know sometimes when you see the things people write on social media you, you, have, you have a little glimpse into the sorrows that have bedeviled their hearts a lady just goes in the middle of the night and writes, Men has come. Just don't probe into that matter. You, you will see that there is something. If you are looking for the beauty of anything, you must cooperate with its time. If you run ahead or behind, you are already, you are already missing out of it. The beauty of anything is inside its time. The scripture says the sons of Issachar, they had understanding of times and seasons so because of that understanding they knew what israel ought to do per time your action is molded guided by that understanding of time sometimes people are rushing but a man that understands time you will sit down gather your strength because it's, you see the reason why i'm sharing this with us there are people you asked out today both of you started dating and the relationship eventually became sour and both of you are now enemies if you would have waited for maybe three years maybe four more years you show up in a refined version of yourself the person has also had the opportunity to be transformed you would have hey, you would have saved yourself this drama meanwhile not everybody that said no to you should have said no sometimes you arrive too early Not every job opportunity would have said no vacancy. Sometimes you went too early. You need to gather yourself first. Not every business should have failed. Sometimes you started too early. Not every marriage should have collapsed. Sometimes you started too early. Tonight I want somebody to cry for just one thing. You, you, are, you are alone in this place. Forget anybody by your side. Lord, give me insight into the seasons and times of my life. Show me where the superior representation of my destiny is captured. Show me where the finest manifestations are kept. out don't rush out lord speak 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 guide me guide me amen have you seen? Listen, look at me. Gather all the ingredients necessary to cook a particular meal together. Gather it together. Put it in a pot. Mix it and try to eat it immediately and see. It will be so disgusting. There is something time will do to all those ingredients if they are added in proportion and in a chronological order. For example, you don't put vegetable from the beginning. There is a crunchiness you need it to maintain. Just imagine a child. A child just shows up and, and comes to you and says, I have been so heartbroken. The kind of heartbreak I've been getting. It is an aberration. It's an aberration. There are prayer points that God is not expecting to hear from you yet. But you are, you are rushing. Where are you going to? They say, oh God, build capacity. Build stature. Build stamina. You say, Lord, why am I getting no from all the sisters? 
and they say, but sisters, sisters can't know you yet. <laughs> See, let me share something with you. The office of a woman by ordination is a help meet for the man. It means when she shows into your life, which is your wife, she will administer the office of a helper. So that help must only be in the direction of your God-given purpose. Now, if you have not found that purpose, a woman in your life is a mistake. She can stay for the first three years and emotion, emotional interaction can keep both of you lovey-dovey. But a time will come, there will be a sense of lack of direction that will create a turbulence in that marriage because her ministry has not been deployed. Who told you that if you can rent a house, if you can clothe yourself and eat, go and marry? Who said so? You will discover very soon that it's not a roof that keeps marriage. It takes, it takes purpose. Something bigger than both of you. Something that consumes both of you. Something both of you can turn and look at together and say, look at what we built together. That one is superior to emotional love. Not too many people are ready to take any step. Not too many people are ready to take any step. Meanwhile, if all you are doing is just catering for yourself, me, myself, and I, listen, the Bible says, for this cause shall a man leave father, mother. You know what it means to leave father? It will, it will take us, this is not a marriage, marriage seminar. Seasons. If you are not patient, I wrote here, you can never see the beauty in anything. If you are not patient, you can never see the beauty in anything. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Is God blessing someone? Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. The Bible says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease please say seed time and harvest say it again seed time and harvest while the earth remaineth it means it's an immutable law as long as you are in the earth, this law will guide the operations within this space. While the earth remains. You see, you don't, look, you don't look for beauty in seed time. Seed time is time to die. What you are looking for in seed time is pain, is sacrifice, is sorrow. You don't look, I'm repeating it. Nobody looks for, for beauty. The beauty of anything is inside the harvest time. A seed, as little as it is, it will fall to the ground. It will experience loneliness because they will cover it and bury it like it is dead. Listen, there are many of us that don't know what God is doing in our life yet. And so you are quick to be sorrowful, quick to enter into depression because you feel like you are being isolated. There is this particular matter called seed time and harvest for almost every allotted outcome of a man's life. I wrote here that the allotted time for any reality is fragmented into seed time and harvest. For instance, let's take financial freedom, financial prosperity as a reality. Let's take marital settlement as a reality. Every reality, there is this particular portion of seed time and harvest time fragmented into any reality. If you are writing, please write this down. Fragmented into any reality is seed time and harvest. There is a seed time for financial freedom. You will never close your eye and open your eyes suddenly 
and see that you are financially free. There will be a season where opportunities are given to you to interact with the principles with every diligent sacrifice that it takes to gain financial freedom. That is the seed time. Meanwhile, all we are interested in is the harvest of every season. When harvest comes, it's not only to show you what people did well. Harvest can also show you the mistakes of people. There are many people blaming the devil for the consequences of their actions. Actions, actions that they took. Meanwhile, every action you are taking actually is a seed. What is a seed? If you are writing, a seed is a sample of whatever you want to multiply in your life. A seed is a sample of whatever you want to multiply in your life. I say it again. A seed is a sample of whatever you want to multiply in your life. In Psalm 126 verse 5, the Bible says, They that sow in tears, they that sow in tears will reap in joy. Is, is it projected for us? Listen, look at me. Have you seen farmers who go for harvest, for the harvest seasons? So they probably harvested, let's say, 15 to 20 bags of maize. If you are with me, you are not distracted, please say amen. amen. They probably harvested 15 to 20 bags of maize. And now they have that maize stored in their various barns or storehouses. They sold probably 18 of it and reserved two. When they start that harvest, they are looking out for the best outcomes in that planting season. The best outcomes, which is the seeds that look the most healthy. They don't eat those ones. They reserve those ones to multiply for the next year. It means that there is a wisdom nature is communicating to us. There is a wisdom nature is communicating to us. Everything you are going to receive, you must lose it. The farmer, the farmer, that seed he dropped on the earth is not useless. He could have eaten it, but he reserved a portion. That portion becomes a seed because all could have been food. Hi, the scripture says, God who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the person who eats, who eats all, all things, the person who understands seasons, he will reserve a portion of this thing and say, I want this result to multiply in my life. Hi. Now, two bags of maize that was kept for nutrient and for meals at home, you will find out that as time goes by, there is a particular reserve that is not for eating. This one, nothing can make anybody eat it. This one is to plant. When God opens a door over your life, God blesses you and you sit down and say, my soul, eat, rest and relax. The moment everything that enters your life only serves your own benefit, you have lost the capacity to multiply and to replicate outcomes. As I'm standing here, if you are alive in the spirit, you will not only be hearing my words, you'll be picking energies. You'll be, you'll be discerning if your spirit agrees with the things leaving my lip. You'll be using other routes to test the things that leaves me. Because what I'm speaking is not words, it is spirits I'm releasing. The words that we speak, they are spirits and they are life. It is that spirit that travels through me as words. So you too, wherever you are, you can discern if God is here. If you don't know God, you cannot even in any way discover God in another person. If you yourself does not have any fellowship with God, how can you know when God is in a place? May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I've defined what a seed is. A seed is a sample of whatever you want to multiply. What is a harvest? A harvest is the consequence of whatever you sow. A harvest is the consequence of whatever you sow. 
You see, you don't bother about harvest. You only bother about seeds. The moment you have sown a seed, you are guaranteed a harvest. God cannot be mocked. Be not deceived. Whatsoever a man sows, whatsoever a man sows. The challenge is when we begin to reap what we sow, sometimes it's in measures beyond our capacity to bear it. Maybe you were just insultive, disrespectful to authorities, and then you too, God brought you to a time where you are put in a position of leadership and everybody rebelled. Your own, you are the only one that rebelled. Now, as you, you became some, everybody say, would, would, I beg. Now, when that starts, what you are experiencing is pressed down, shaking together. When, when you, you will give, you see, meanwhile, that scripture is not offering scripture. He says, give, and it shall be given unto you. You want honor? Treat people with honor. You want respect? Treat people with respect. You want friends? Show yourself friendly. You know, not too many people understand the potency of this law. Not too many people understand the gravity. Please, daddy, there's a seat for you at the front. Thank you, sir. Please. Oh, Jesus. A harvest is the consequence of whatever you sow. Please, if you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Now I have shown you that there is a planting season and then there is the season of harvest. But each of these seasons have their battles that accompany them. There are battles that accompany every season. For example, the planting season. I think we can make reference to Matthew chapter 13. From verse 3, you will find the parable of the seed sower. I'm just trying to share briefly on the battles that accompany the planting season. In Matthew chapter 13 from verse 3, also you read in verse 24, you will see the parable of the seed sower and you will see the parable of weeds. You will see Jesus sharing there about the parable of the seed sower that a certain man went into the field to plant seeds and the seeds fell on different types of ground. So it's not just enough to identify a time to labor. You can labor, but there is such a labor the scripture defines as the labor of the foolish. What it will do at the end of the day is that it will weary the person that labored because he will not find the way to the city. It's not enough to give due diligence, to labor, to wake up early at night and to wake up early and sleep late at night only to eat the bread of you can cast seeds but they can land on stony grounds and you can return in the season of harvest and there is nothing to show that actually you were not sleeping you were not sleeping when others were at the field but some seeds can fall on stony grounds I need us to pray as God takes us in this point one after the other. You are going to ask the Lord, guide my, my strength, guide my effort, guide my attention. Let me not give time to anything that will not translate into progress. Let me not waste time. Some of you are about to say yes to somebody's proposal, somebody's approach. And then you will waste four years in that relationship that will not lead anywhere. What you have done is that you have casted seed on a stony ground. You are about to carry resources and put in a business that eventually will collapse, swallow the capital and nothing will be there to show forth that you actually worked hard. You are about to travel a very far distance pursuing certain opportunities that will not open up one bit. Ask the Lord, guide my use of strength. Let me not waste my energy. Are you praying? Are you praying? Guide and direct me, Holy Ghost. In 2024, I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste energy. 
and thou shalt hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way this is the way walk in it Listen, for the past two weeks, I've continued to reiterate, I've continued to emphasize the need for divine direction on this journey of destiny. And not too many people have seen the import, the weight of this conversation. You can actually do everything within your own power. And at the end of the day, you would understand what the great teacher said. I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. If it is this journey of destiny, this race of destiny, speed is not an advantage. Meanwhile, it is speed that wins normal race. But he says there is a unique, a uniqueness in this race. Speed alone does not give you the victory. He says, I returned and I saw that the fastest men did not win. So what advantage gave men victory? Hi. You shall hear a voice. Three brothers show up. One came with a Lexus Jeep. He wore a tag of a church so that you will know that he is a brother in the fellowship. And the first thing he said to you, is salutations <laughs> and you say surely surely this is of kingdom stock is there any need to ask God again I mean every sign is pointing at it let me tell you one truth if you know how much Satan the extent Satan can go to make sure you miss the visitation of God every time God opens a door Satan opens doors too the essence is to make you confused. Once you enter the door that is not of God, Satan never intends to bless you. He just wants you to miss the season of your visitation. The moment you miss what is of God, that thing you entered will close. You will hear a voice. There are many destiny determining decisions on the path of progress. And right now, many people don't know yet. You are using common sense. You are analyzing. I read something. The Bible says riches and wealth are from the fathers. But a woman that fears the Lord is from God. It means that there is no metrics you can use to say from everything I have analyzed. Surely this one you would analyze and still fall. divine direction when God is whispering things to you when God is echoing counsel to your heart part time Lord should I go should I travel somebody say come to Lagos now this is a sure job opportunity you got up start arranging your bag and suddenly that voice that voice that voice it comes to you in a whisper and he says where are you going to where are you? You know, many of us who have not even known how to discern that voice. It must not be audible. Sometimes it is a, 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 a vacillation of your peace. When your peace drops, it's a communication of the utterance of God. You use your peace, your inner peace, as a tool to discern God's position on matters. Somebody comes and is in your front. Everything physically checks out, but there's no peace. Follow that no peace. Follow that no peace as what you believe. Until, you see, I have learned to maximize these operations. There are things I have done that physically does not look logical. But time justified me. Please pray wherever you are. It's just a simple prayer. Holy Ghost, let your voice be close to me this year. Let your echo, your whisper, your counsel, your utterance, 
let it echo in me this year let me hear you as a man hears his friend let your counsel not be far from me for some of you you are about to make costly mistakes and only this voice only this voice will guide you only this voice will guide you brother began to process his travel document went through all the various processes and stages came to a point when it was time for them to leave the country and he suddenly came and said he has lost his peace and they said this is an attack that this is manipulation that it is the village people that have projected an attack subconsciously in a realm where nobody can discern they say what you need now is to just find yourself in that plane once you reach there you will discover that it is an attack <laughs> the long and short of the story was that everybody that that travel agency were, were, were preparing for that flight they were organ harvesters they are only picking people to go and harvest their organs because there is a booming market for liver for kidneys so when, when, they, when they gathered those people, they, they, were, they were just looking at raw materials. These are businessmen that trade in human parts. And people, people joined, paid their own money to go and die. There will be a whisper. The difference between life and death will be that whisper. Sometimes it will not be so loud to even seem like it's an important emphasis. A whisper. My sheep hears my voice. This is the only way you can actually go out of deception, come out of all the attack and every wickedness. Satan will camouflage in this end time. You follow the voice. Follow the voice. The second battle that fights people in the planting season of their life is the contention the contention for focus the contention for resources and the contention for manifestation I will explain it please if you are writing you can take that down the contention for focus contention for resources and contention for manifestation this will happen for anybody who is attempting to sow a seed that can cause a glorious harvest. The moment you want to plant anything worthwhile, this one must happen to you. It is captured in Matthew chapter 13, in verse 24. There you will see the parable of the weeds. The Bible says, a certain man planted good seeds Please, if you are with me, say amen. amen. I've told you what a seed is. A sample of anything you want to multiply. So a certain man took a sample of something good enough that he wanted to multiply. And he planted it. The moment he planted it, an enemy showed up. The enemy did not uproot what was planted. That is not the aim. I'm showing you the battles that confront us on daily basis. The aim is not to remove what was planted. It is to plant something contrary beside it. If you know the nature of weeds, weeds are aggressive. Weeds are, nobody plant weeds. They come on their own. Use fire and burn them. By the time water drops on that land, they will come back again. You know what they are contending for? The nutrients. The nutrient that is supposed to be available for proper growth and development of the real seed 
all of these other things that are planted in order to make sure your effort although you are making effort but you will not work in your maximum capacity utility so there are people sitting here looking at me right now the results their educational results their academic results is not a reflection of their true potential they know that if they did better they know that they had capacity to have done better than whatever they are holding but there are battles that are always targeted at the planting season to make sure that the yield the yield is not always in its full potential there are those of us who are under under the spell under an attack of the spirit of procrastination you know you know what you ought to be doing but somehow every 24 hour cycle is a test that you are not in control of your time many things continue to buffet to make sure that the version of you that is supposed to manifest per season you will always be behind time let me tell you one truth it will pain you but hold it near your heart if you don't catch up with the calendar of the divine everybody ordained to connect with you inside time will never recognize you because there is a version of you they were ordained to meet and since you did not maximize transformation they will continue to walk past you a friend can become an enemy because of the version he met you and the version he met you will make sure both of you will never agree and the real challenge in this matter is that you did not grow there are many doors that said no to us the real answer was yes but you did not you did not come in your most latest most superior version who's who who answers a mediocre who gives contract to a person who has no capacity to, to to execute the other day somebody showed up and said he wants to sow something for me i said all right let me see some of the things you have done because of course we need to be our we need to support the brethren <laughs> so he says we need to be catching for ourselves since we are together how can we now be giving unbelievers the things to be so so let's let's be helping us i said okay let me see what you have done the brother went to zoom and screen grab pictures of other people's work and he does not know that i am aware so he said these are some of the, the works that he has done that in fact one thing he can guarantee me is that once he sows for me i will regret why i didn't discover him early So I, I decided to play along. I bought a, a material that if it's bad, I will not be bad, I will not feel bad about it. So I, I bought it and I gave it to him. I said, just sew a normal top and this thing for me, just a regular this thing. He said, but should, should he put some lines in? I said, no, just do it simple. He said, but there, I said, just do this thing. Then he brought the wear and true to my suspicion, one of my legs could not enter the other trouser. <laughs> And I, and I said, thank you, Jesus. I, I glorify you because I already knew I was wasting this money. So I looked for the most cheapest material. Guess what? Let that brother go to any fashion school he wants. The moment I see his face tomorrow, it, it is your yesterday that has closed tomorrow's door. Many of you, what you did yesterday because of lack of alignment with the timing of God for your life, you can show up tomorrow in your most superior form and people will refuse. They will refuse to update their knowledge of you. They continue to hold on to. Seasons. Hallelujah, 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 ah. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, today I speak to everybody who have lost certain time in their life. I speak to those who look 
back and they cannot account for 20 years, for 30 years. What have I done with my life? I speak to everybody who has been a victim of the devourer, canker worm, palma worms, and caterpillar. I speak to those that spirits of procrastination have eaten chunk of years out of their life. I speak to those who are sitting down in sorrow and saying, can I still amount to anything? I'm about to introduce you to a dimension of God. Time is real with God. There is no time that God cannot restore. There is something I will show us in the next few minutes and I'm trusting the Lord it will bless you immensely. I'm singing that song because I'm saluting the one that holds times and seasons in his hands. It will look like it is gone. It will look like yesterday is past. But I'm speaking to you about a person who dwells in a realm where time is not real. He says, I will restore the years. With men, they can restore lost properties, lost possession. But they say time that is lost is lost with men. But God says, with me, I will restore the years. When you are dealing with God, remove your mind from the limitations of men. Because when you read that scripture, most of us believe that what is in that scripture is that everything, every opportunity you miss, every, every, everything you are supposed to get that because of some lack, some mistakes, some lack of alignment that you did not get, that God can bring it back into your life. It is beyond possession. He says, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm and the caterpillar is telling you that it is not only going to be possession you will also be in a frame of life a frame of health that gives you the right standing to enjoy everything that was taken from you you will also engage every opportunity every relationship everything captured in those seasons that was stolen from you he says i will restore the years I want us to pray for one minute. Follow me as we do these prayers. Lord, every missing opportunity, missing time, missing encounters, every season of my life unaccounted for, I pray for restoration. I press for restoration. Yeah, 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 yeah. was a lack of discernment and we missed great opportunities some of us when we sit down our thoughts are full of regrets because you know better there were things you wish you would have done differently some of us you don't need to think too far to see many areas that you would have you would have loved if you had the chance to readjust your option to change some of the actions you took today I want to share something with you. A season, a season is known by certain signals, by certain indices. Let's say a farmer got carried away and the others who understood the change of times and seasons, they saw that the heavens have shifted and they saw the cloud gather. Everybody has run, carried their various appliances and equipment, took the seeds they intended to plant 
and the rain fell and they descend and they went and engaged the land. Meanwhile, on a normal day, on the dry season, they will not go to the land. There is a sign, a signal that they see in the heaven that made everybody know that my action now can yield results. So all farmers ran into the farm and they began to transact with the land. Let's say there was a, a farmer that was consumed with pleasure. He said that he just got married. He needed to spend time with his damsel. And so he was inside the room throughout the planting season. Then later he came out. <laughs> as legitimate as his excuse is, God will not change the season because of him. Now, let's say he now started rolling on the ground, crying, going from one prayer house to another. I want to show you some ordinance that cannot change. And say, oh God, please give me a chance to plant me too. What, what you don't know is that there are crops that if you miss certain time, you can't plant them again. If you try, the whole, the whole enterprise will be a waste. And so while he's going from one prayer house to another, rolling on the ground, drinking anointing oil, doing all kinds of schemes, it will, be, it will be clear to him very soon that the only thing that God can do for him in a matter like this, hey, see, let's say because of this one man, God now says, I will bring back the planting season. Everybody whose seed has entered the land, all of them will record serious wastage. Their seeds will all damage. So the fact that you missed a season did not mean everybody did not maximize their season. So on your account, they cannot shift programs. They cannot alter the calendar of the divine. So there's only one way God can help you. One of the ways is to make you very conscious of seasons so that you can discern the season. Now for a man who has missed the window, I will show you how you can make up for it. How do you know that you are in a season? Maybe I will give you six indices, six signals to know that I'm entering a new season. A season is about to change in my life. The moment you can discern the season, number two, you will know the advantages that season brings. Number three, you will know what kind of efforts to deploy so that you maximize the season. I've given that illustration already. Go and, go and farm in the dry season. Although you are hardworking, your hard work will translate to nothing because there is a season you must partner with. Let me give you five. Or let's say six. Six signs and indicators of a new season. Six signs and indicators of a new season. If you are here, please shout amen. amen. Number one, a reoccurrence of a particular outcome or result. A reoccurrence of a particular outcome or result. If you are writing, please write that down. A reoccurrence of a particular outcome or result. Look at me. How do you know it's a mango season? The moment you start walking around the streets, left, right, center, everywhere, there is mango staring you at the face. Suddenly, many people begin to do mango business as a sign that this thing is available. Now, when certain results become unusually increased in a particular time is an indicator that a season has opened up. Let me, let me give you another illustration to make sense. You see, there is a season as a lady where even if you tie just wrapper, woke up from sleep and you say, let me just cross the road and buy sugar here. There will be more than three brothers that would be behaving as though it's a life and death situation. They cross the road without looking at the left and right and they are just following you like a zombie. You may, as a sister, say, hi, there's something about me I don't just know. It will not last forever. It's a season. You know it's a season when that outcome becomes unusually repetitive. Once you identify a season, there's a posture you, you take because it is the season that defines your actions. You know what the average sister will do? 
You say, no, 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 no. Please, oh, I beg you, I beg, I beg, I beg. I don't want. And then when she finished all her younger, a time will now come. She will wear high heel. She will do foundation. Do proper makeup. Wear bone straight hair. And nobody will say, sister, nothing. Go out and come back. Nobody said, what's your name? A season has passed. Are you with me? Oh, I know you will not answer. And, and I, I am not interested in your answer. <laughs> a time will come in the life of a brother. You just get up like this. And apply something here. Now, now they will call you for interview. You went to do this. Before you know it, a friend told you that there is, there is one opportunity. There is, there is a business. If you just put this money inside. And then you are looking around you. There is so much cash flow. So much cash flow entering your life. Brother, it's a season. It's a season. I want to show you first. How to maximize seasons. Number two. How to sustain seasons. And number three. If you missed it. I want to show you how to call it back. This, 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 you see, especially the way to recreate seasons that were missed. You will need this. You will, you will pray to God to hold it dear to your heart. The first indicator of a season is what we have written in number one. Reoccurrence of particular outcomes. Reoccurrence. Reoccurrence. If you are not careful, you see, this is exactly... This is exactly the narrative, you know, in many people's life at the moment. Number two, let's not waste time. Time is not on our side. Second indices, second way to identify a change of seasons. A sense of total dissatisfaction and discontentment with a reality you were once comfortable about. A sense of total dissatisfaction and discontentment about a reality you were once comfortable about. John chapter 16 verse 21. John chapter 16 verse 21. The Bible says, A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour is come. The sorrow is because her hour of travail has come. So she is about to change season. She is about to give birth. She is about to bring forth. But there is a sorrow that announces that particular um, visitation. There is a sorrow that announces that particular change of season. It says a woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour has come. There are certain times and certain points of your life when some areas, some feeling of distress, some feeling of lack of joy just arrest you about things you were once very comfortable with. It's an indicator that it's time to change seasons. Not, not all the times you will be so aligned to pick the frequencies of God. So sometimes it is through distress and inconvenience that God will push you out of certain seasons to enter the next. What I'm speaking about right now, many of us were already there. And many of us will repeat these mistakes. You were celebrating, you know, just happy. Some of you at the moment, at the moment, the things you are you were so happy about two years ago is beginning to be so boring, like a routine, like a routine. Meanwhile, let me balance this very quickly. I'm not talking about marriages. You cannot, how can you be married? And then you get up one day and say, the marriage is bored. I, I will not press further on this matter. That is, that is somebody's reason for divorcing. That the marriage has lost its spark. Is marriage for spark? 
that there's this synergy there's this synergy that we we no longer sustain <laughs> these are the these, these are the lots that await you if you marry a slave queen <laughs> time is not on our side number three third indicator of seasons the closing and opening of doors the closing and opening of doors in Genesis chapter 39 Joseph had gained favor with Potiphar suddenly it looks like all of the different unpleasant experience he went through in the hands of his brothers God has finally consoled him before he can say look at what God has done you know that song see what the Lord has done before he finished singing it a door closed meanwhile he never knew I believe he never knew that it was that dream that he saw that one day the sun, the moon and 11 stars will bow themselves to him it was that dream that was shifting outcomes, changing seasons making sure the factors align, one door was closing, another door was opening, but the opening of the new door did not look like a door, it was not the door to the palace first, it was to the dungeon it is the dungeon that led to the palace. In the point where you do everything within your control, everything within your power, and things still fall out of hand. Brother, rejoice. Sister, don't be sorrowful. The closing and opening of doors is an indicator that a season has opened up. Sometimes we can hold on to certain results because it has become our comfort zone. And the only way God can push us into the new is that he will shut the door against your will. Suddenly the people you thought are your friends forever, the people you thought you are going to be partners in business for a long time, you just show up one day and there is an attitude. Suddenly the conversation is not sounding like you are in good terms anymore. Brother, your life is not with them. It's only a chapter that is with them. There is a chapter in the life of Joseph that he never knew. He went into the dungeon and stayed in the dungeon. And there was no day where Potiphar's wife came out and said, just to confess, this brother. Meanwhile, if you are the one, the moment you, you become a prime minister in Egypt, you will say, there is a matter we need to clear the air on. Because... It is, it is it's just for the sake of posterity. You know, we will not be here forever. So when people talk about us, it is good things are put in, in context. In context. Please, can somebody look for Potiphar's wife for us? Let's, let's just be honest with ourselves. <laughs> you will need to close some doors forever. You know, there are doors God will close around your life and you are still tied to trying to go and just drop one more line. But there's, there's something I need to say so that I will get it off my chest. Leave that in. Why is it on your chest? <laughs> Let those doors close. Many of us, the reason why we cannot enter the new is because we are stuck in the past. You are stuck there. Somebody broke your heart in 2012 till today. Till today. You still go to their social media account and be checking. You will be zooming their picture and be seeing. Anytime you see they are losing weight, you say, <laughs> you think you can play with grace and... <laughs> You don't know how many times people keep an itchy ear waiting for something negative to happen to other people so that they can just feel a sense of satisfaction and say, you think you can treat me anyhow? Joke with grace and face disgrace. <laughs> Brother, move on. Sister, move on. Meanwhile, there are many sicknesses that are in people's body today which are product of bitterness. The Holy Ghost taught me this sometime last year. He told me that if his people can just forgive one another, a great deal of infirmity will be lifted from them. There are many sickness lodging in your life on the platform of bitterness. I don't care what the person did to you. Let it go. Did you hear me? Let it go. It amazed me the way Joseph just moved from a prisoner. Meanwhile, in the day where destiny will eventually play the card and connect the parts together, they will never ask you what happened yesterday. 
Did you know that Pharaoh did not care to ask, why were you in the dungeon in the first place? There was no conversation like that. No need for that. I prophesy to somebody here. God will bring the pieces of everything you don't understand. And he will bring a holistic decoration out of your life in this year 2024. Sometimes you set your course on a path. You are so sure this relationship would work. I took my time to fast and pray before I entered. And a time just comes. Everything begins to go sour. You try to save the relationship. The more you are making an effort to preserve it, everything deteriorates. Brother, sister, rejoice. Rejoice. The only thing you know is today, many, many, many are the plans of a man. He says, but only the counsel of the Lord will stand. So it means God loves you so much that if you are even about to make a mistake, he will make sure that it does not go by your own plan. There's a place to rest. Rest in the knowledge that God loves me. Rest in the knowledge that God will not do anything that is not for my good. Rest in that knowledge. Now there are people that this is why the Holy Ghost is bringing this to you now. You need to forget everything that is continuing to take you back to all of those past experiences. You cannot handle the new until you have actually let go of the old. Let your hand, let your hand open up now because God is about to fill it up. Huh? Can you hear me? Please, I need you to think in your heart. Take one minute, wherever you are, and ask the Holy Ghost, everything I have held on to, every offense, every bitterness, Please take it away. I cannot help myself. I cannot let it go by myself. Heal this bleeding heart. Take away this pain and hurt. Make me ready to receive the new. There's no man that poured new wine in old wine skin. If not for that brother that wasted my time, I know where I would have been by now. Sister, let it go. Just let it go. There is so much more ahead of you. Don't look back. Keep your gaze ahead. Keep looking. Keep looking forward. God has so much in store for you. If only I was not swindled in 2001. If only they did not take all my capital in 2021 I know where I would have been by brother look forward look forward hallelujah number four very quickly so that we run through it warfare and attacks warfare and attacks is an indicator that you have broken into a new season meanwhile the only reason why we are emphasizing these things is that if you enter a new season and you don't discern it, you would miss all the possibilities that are domiciled in that season. It takes discernment to maximize the openings of God. Warfare and attack. Have you been living quietly, living peacefully, and suddenly a season of warfare and attack break around you? Brother, sister, it's a sign. You have stepped on new grounds. You have ventured into uncharted territories. The kings and rulers of that space, they are beginning to question, who is this one who wants to establish a new priesthood in a space we have ruled for long? Every time warfare and attack suddenly comes around your life, brother, it's an indicator. You have entered a new season. Meanwhile, this is what Satan wants. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 4, the Bible says a woman, in context now, a woman was heavy with a child, about to bring forth. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 4, it says a dragon, a dragon appeared from nowhere and stood in front of the woman, waiting for her to put forth so that he may destroy her child. Listen, the dragon did not come for the woman. The dragon knew the woman all along. The woman didn't attract the dragon all this while that she was not pregnant. 
it was the moment she entered travail and birth pain starts. The moment her water broke, the dragon said, it's, it's time, it's time. There is a new season she's about to enter. This is the only thing that attracted the dragon. Warfare and attacks. Satan brings this warfare to make you so carried away by the presence of hostility, the presence of resistance, the presence of the adversary, so that you will not be able to discern the opening of God. Many people become enemy conscious in the season of God's visitation. They begin to pray all kinds of strange prayers. Meanwhile, the moment you could discern it, what you would have said is, let it be done for me on earth as it already is in heaven. I saw in the visions of the night. I saw that I stood tall among my brethren. I saw that I was lending to nation. I saw that I became a deliverer over nations and territory. Once you wake up, you begin to speak the things that you have seen in God. You don't speak the things that describes your situation and your circumstance. This is the difference between those who walk by faith and those who walk by sight. Those who walk by sight, all their prayer is a description of what they are going through. Lord, you know the country is hard, but we are trusting in you. That's not prayer, my brother. Lord, you can see that wives are scarce, but I know you can help me. <laughs> you are describing the problem. You are describing it. You are describing it. You know what accurate prayer is? You know, there are people that have not been smiling since. I don't know what your problem is, but... <laughs> you, don't, you don't describe the problems. Meanwhile, this is the preoccupation of demons. They continue to create many realities around you to make you conscious of the things that are not working so that your utterance can describe what you are seeing. The moment you speak what you are seeing, you have lost... Because actually, the battle, the last place of victory and defeat is your tongue. It will start from your heart. They will be trying to convince you to look at things from different perspectives. They are showing you, listen, a man can come home and sit down quietly on the TV screen. And suddenly there is an entertainment. Maybe there is a Hollywood movie or a Nollywood movie playing. And the movie is showing you how wives are unfaithful. He now showed that the man went to work and his wife was now having an affair with somebody else. Listen, <laughs> you don't know Satan. <laughs> the totality of that entertainment is not for pleasure. There is a seed he wants to plant. That seed, it will produce consciousness about a matter you were never conscious about. Suddenly, the man now gets up after watching the movie and he believes that he's, he now has new wisdom. So, the wife will just be at home. Suddenly, she will just see her husband enters the room by somebody who left home by 8 a.m. He enters the room by 11.30 a.m. And he thinks he's wise. He just wasted his time. You, 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 you know what is happening to him? He's trying to play out a, 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 a script that he saw somewhere. He became sensitive to things that are not real in his own context. target is to put it so much in your heart so that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will now speak the moment your mouth speak hi there will be a great disappointment in the host of the celestials how did you confess this about your life so they continue to bring all kinds of news all kinds of stories you on the tv you are watching the news they are showing you all kinds of tragedy they want your mouth to describe it meanwhile listen the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well. This is our utterance. He says, when men shall say, there is a casting down. We will say, there is a lifting. You join people and say, Kai, I don't understand this country. Brother, what you have done is that you have measured your experience. You have shaped your experience by your utterance. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. He says, through faith, we understand that the word was framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen 
were not made from things which do appear. So it is unseen elements, unseen building blocks called words that create your reality. You will not speak the things you are supposed to say. You will only speak the state of your heart. This is why every spirit is trying to throw imaginations into your heart so that out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. There are many people here trying to, to be a hypocrite. And I'll tell you how that plays out. You are defeated in your mind. You are defeated in your mind. Your heart captures all kinds of backward postures of your identity, but you always try to talk bogus things. It will always need the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart to both tally together. And so tonight, one of our prayers is that the Lord should help our hearts to only see ourselves as he sees us. To only believe the things that he has spoken concerning our life. I don't care what the experience of everybody in the nation will be. But as for me, when men shall say there is a casting down. I will say there is a lifting. A thousand shall fall by my side. Ten thousand by my right hand side. No evil shall by any means hurt me. Only with my eye. I will see and behold the reward of the wicked. Anybody who digs a pit for me will fall into it. Anybody who rolls a stone against me, to him it will return. My going out and my coming in is preserved. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I have more understanding than the ancients. I know more than my teachers. Listen, tell yourself these things. I'm not disadvantaged. I am not small. I am not limited. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I am a child of God. I am born of an incorruptible seed. I am not of them that draw back. I am a God because I am a child of God. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Gods don't fail. Look at what is happening in your bloodline. Look at everything happening in the family. I have been called out of every language, every tribe, every tongue. I am a choosing generation, a royal priesthood. We are royals. I am not beggarly. I am not struggling. We are nobles on earth. We will rise in your name, Adonai, you reign on high. We will rise in your name, Adonai, you reign on high. We will rise. In your name, Adonai. Whether the world is sinking, whether the economies of nations are failing, whether the security infrastructure of nations are failing, I am hid in Christ and Christ in God. No weapon formed or fashioned against me shall prosper every tongue that rises up against me in judgment i will condemn can you take the next five minutes wherever you are you have been confessing negatives you have been speaking negatives Say something nice now.
Heya ya, heya ya, heya ya, heya ya, heya ya, heya ya. waving goodbye waving goodbye to everything behind the path of the justice like a shining light it shines brighter and brighter sister brother listen to me your good days are not behind your good days are not in the past your good days are ahead of you your good days they are just ahead of you great things are ahead of you pray one prayer wherever you are seasons of increase seasons of honor seasons of greatness open up open up seasons of impact open a father be opened Please listen. If you can, please give me your attention. Time is far spent. I don't intend to revisit this next week. While we are standing, I will just read it out very quickly. I trust the Holy Ghost. He would breathe life upon it. If you can sit, please sit. In the next 10 minutes, we should be out of here. Psalm 74 verse 9. The Bible says, We see not our signs. Neither is there any among us that knoweth how long. We see not our signs. So when a people are void of the signals of God, they miss the visitation of God. The fifth indices is to discern a change and a shift of seasons. Is dreams and visions. Dreams 
and visions. Dreams and visions. A season comes upon you where suddenly, almost every night, they begin to cast a particular matter before your gaze. Brother, it is an indication that you have shifted seasons. Sometimes, you will sit down like this and have a dream. In your dream, you will see yourself as an adult. Although you are an adult. Let me give you a very popular illustration. You can see yourself in an exam hall. Sitting and there's papers maybe in front of you. Or there's an assignment or something important to be assessed. And then you will realize that you don't know anything to write in that hall. Or everybody wrote and they were submitting. You are the only one that could not submit. All that you wanted to write, your biro was not writing. And you were looking for a way to quickly get a pen until the exam ended. When you wake up, it's a signal, brother. When you wake up, it's a message from the divine. They are showing you that there is an assessment that qualifies you for the next that you have not aligned properly for. So go and do a quick appraisal of your life and check which area. For many times, it is because we abuse time. They are telling you, you need to redeem the time quickly because there are versions of you that are demanded by Zion to manifest now. And so once you begin to have dreams, visions, and revelation, communicating an emphasis, it is an indicator that a season has opened up. What is the business with a poor man sitting down in his lack, in his, you know, um, scarcity and having dreams where he's donating food supply to people who are, you know, displaced? What is the business with a person who have no means to even feed properly to see themselves catering to people, catering rather for people who are, you know, disadvantaged and he's seeing himself just giving? Listen, it's a signal. They are showing you that although you are looking like somebody who is down, there is a new season opening up for you. The moment you have glimpses of these things, you realign. I'm trying to run through these things so I cannot dwell much on them. For dreams and revelations, our scripture is Genesis chapter 41. That was the only platform where Egypt was delivered. Pharaoh would have just been so rich, you know, he would be so excited by the harvest of the next seven years that are coming. But he took a dream for God to save a whole land from famine. Because through that dream, they were able to assess the seven years of surplus and the seven years of famine that will follow. It was captured in a very simple dream in one night. The details of 14 years was captured inside it. Meanwhile, that dream was probably not more than two minutes. It didn't take long for seven fat cows to swallow seven lean cow, and that was all. That is a message for 14 years combined. Don't trivialize your dreams. Don't trivialize your dreams. Many of you, your dreams are so accurate, your dreams are so accurate that you have dreams, you wake up because of how bogus your flesh is compared to your spirit. The dreams are detained by the flesh every time you wake up. So you, you wake up and say, Kai, as though I, I dreamt of something, but I cannot remember it. That dream is still active in your spirit. Your spirit still traps that reality. But because the flesh is bogus, once, once he resumes, he shuts down all the facilities of the spirit. So since that facility of revelation has been shut down, you, you will say, Kai, there's something I, I saw. One of the most easy way to retrieve the things you are trying to contend for, go into fasting immediately. If you go into fasting, you will hit a threshold of hunger where the vistas of revelation, you, you, you will now remember that I saw myself, I saw myself wearing a boot. <laughs> Many deliverance has come for us, but we wake up and forget it because it was buried in simple dreams. Decisions, you are busy asking God, what should I do? Some of it have come already in dreams, but you choose to neglect. It's a very powerful area of spiritual illumination. Dreams, visions, and revelations. Lastly, another indicator of a change of season is increased hunger and access to knowledge. 
increased hunger and access to knowledge. The first time the description of Jesus' manifestation was captured, it was captured at his birth. They just told you he has been born and they told you he was born in a manger. The second time his manifestation was captured, they say he was 12 years old and they found him with scholars, teachers of the law, asking and answering questions. There are many people that will move around with very, very erroneous you know, notion of this matter. Jesus was not teaching scholars. He was, he was fortifying himself with the knowledge base that God has made available to man first. Because he started from there asking questions. It was the questions he was asking that was provoking responses from them. See what, see what he preoccupied himself with at age 12. Because there was a burden. There is a new season that was about to break out in his life. So there was a quest for knowledge. A hunger for knowledge. And access to strategic information. When you meet a person who begins to assess knowledge. Who begins to assess light. When you meet them today and meet them tomorrow, they would have changed. Because part time, every light, every knowledge they are fellowshipping with is changing them into new versions. Every knowledge they are handling is stepping their manifestation up. So you can never see a person who is dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge and see them the same way at two points of their life. They will always be ever evolving. You know that a season is opening up when a hunger, an increased hunger for knowledge comes upon your life. Listen. Many of us have aborted seasons like this. And the reason for that increased hunger is to prepare you for the new place you are stepping into. Since you did not maximize that hunger to learn, that yearning to press into knowledge, you now arrive eventually into new heights and since you were not prepared the stage that was supposed to be for your glory becomes a place for shame because when you remove preparation from the story of a man every stage designed to lift him up will become shame I told you that I will show you ways to draw back lost seasons. If I don't do that, we have not made any progress today. So I'll, I'll just run through it. If God gives me grace on Tuesday at Congress, I will explain it on Tuesday. Let me just give it out. First way to bring back lost seasons. Let me give you an, an, an example so that it will make sense. Let's say uh, a season of abundance came and you mismanaged it in ignorance. A season of abundance. Remember one of the indices I told you to use to discern seasons. There will be, you know, a, a reoccurrence of a particular outcome in, in very high capacities. So, let's say many guys showed up and you said no to everybody. And then a season now came where they were not showing up much again. How do you call back seasons that you have lost? How do you draw back realities that you have missed? Number one. Start speaking what you desire. Start speaking what you desire. Start speaking what you desire. Listen, it looks too simple, but if you practice the keys I'm sharing with you, it will work like night and day. Start speaking what you desire. I read it again. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith we understand that the physical realities around our life are framed by the words we are speaking. I've made mistakes. Kai. 
I tell you some of the things my hand have handled, brother, leave all those things behind. Start declaring from where you are now. You see, God did not tell Abraham, Lot, Lot had chosen all the lush looking land already. But God came to Abraham. No need to dwell on the past. No need to dwell on what Lot has done. He says, look from where you are. Now that you are here, from this place, look as far as your eye can see. Start speaking what you desire. Don't describe your situation. Don't describe what you are going through. Just only say the things you desire. It means there will be a consecration that will come into your utterance. Your words. You will be so careful with your utterance. The moment you are deliberate about recreating lost seasons. So this is what you do. You don't show up and say, um, I'm just trusting God that this year will be better than last year. You have not, you have not described what you are desiring. By the grace of God, we are trusting the Lord. If Christ tarries, this year, you see, one of the reasons why we are emphasizing these things is that every time you begin to say these things in specifics, it becomes clear that number one, you know exactly what you want. Number two, you are not describing the situations around your life. Number three, your faith, your faith has identified the outcome. See what the Bible says. If you can say unto this mountain, not the mountains, this mountain, not mountains, it means you must identify the mountain. Then you challenge it specifically. The moment you lose something, don't camp around what has happened and begin to feel bothered, begin to feel moody. From then on, make sure your conversations. Meanwhile, it is not possible to be saying something that is not the state of your heart. So you always find out that the more you stay about that part, the more you are confessing these things, the more you are declaring them. It's just a matter of time. You will call back everything. Anything that is on your lip, it will enter your life. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Ah, oh, the good old days. I remember that time when a lot of money was in my hand. No. Get up in the morning and say, I have in abundance. Money comes to me. Everything I put my hands to do is blessed. Today, everything I touch becomes gold. Nothing dies in my hand. This is how you go about these things. You know what you will discover? Everything on your lip has become the outcome of your life. You will not understand how quick your tongue can shape your life. Meanwhile, many spirits will be trying to show you the current outcome of your life. See what is happening. The moment your only utterance are the things you desire. This is exactly what scripture meant. When he says, let the weak, although they are weak, their desire is not to remain weak. So let their utterance only communicate their desire. Let the weak say they are strong. If you say I am weak, were you lying? No. But scripture does not permit you to describe your feelings. He says speak only that which is best for you. Let the weak say I am strong. You write an exam and then a reply came back from an interview you went for. You say, we are very sorry. You know, you just feel, uh-uh, uh-uh. Doors are opening for me this year. Doors are opening for me. I don't take no for an answer. Listen, let me tell you one truth. The moment you begin to walk in these things, it has a way of shaping your life to reflect your utterance. Your utterance. Number two. Ha, huh, time is fast spent. Number two, activate the law of seeds and harvest. Activate the law of seeds and harvest. Look at me. You have missed an opportunity. You have missed a window. 
you have missed a time. I want to explain this concept with um, the water cycle. Every rain that falls on the earth, every rain that falls on the earth, every water that the earth receives from the heaven was once on the earth. You look at the water cycle carefully, you will see that there are procedures that makes that water will evaporate, water will leave the surface of both plants, surface of waters, and then the heaven will receive those water. In fact, the scripture says that if thy cloud be full of rain, it is then that they will empty themselves. So the emptying, which is the rainfall, the downpour, the shower, that emptying themselves is a, is a function of is your cloud full of rain. The earth will give to the heaven until the heaven becomes heavy. Then the heaven responds back to the earth. That's the water cycle. It means what you are looking for, you will be given an opportunity to give that same thing to. Do you understand me? See, I'm trusting God for marital settlement. Look at me. You know that there's a season that you want to force back into your life. Now you cannot say you have it's not like money that you can say you have a small part of money and that becomes a seed and you give it out. See what you do. Remove your eye from your own life. Identify somebody who is also buffeted by that need. Make them your prayer emphasis. If you know how, this is, this is magical. Be sacrificial about it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, answer my brother. Answer my sister. Open the door of marital settlement. Let there be a speedy response for them. In the name of Jesus, I connect them with their God-ordained spouse. I declare that the door open for them. What you are doing is that you are giving what you are asking the heaven for. The same way the earth will give water before it receives water. The same way a farmer will give that seed before he receives it in bountiful measure. You will always give that thing you are asking for. Not too many people understand this concept. You have lost a season. There is, it is too easy to call it back. It is too easy. You must, let a, you must let go of a sample of that. Meanwhile, it will take wisdom now for you to discern the difference between a harvest and a seed. You say, but I don't have. It is because you don't have. That's why you need to sow. When, when, when things have become very low, you, you quickly need to multiply it. Meanwhile, if you hear what I've said, I'm in no way telling anybody to even give. Before you say, uh, all of these men of God are always talking about giving. I'm telling you, if you explore, I told you you must give towards your future, which is a saving. You must give to the needy and the poor. Because he that remembers the poor, lend it to God. You cannot give to God and God will owe you a debt. It means you have provoked an, an irreversible reaction and God will never give you exactly what you give. It will come in good measure, pressed down and shaken together. You are looking for a job? Brother, remove your eye from yourself. You lost an opportunity already and you are thinking it's gone. Carry somebody's case on your head. Make that person your own body and be intentional. Don't be hypocritical. Don't be doing it and say, you know, let me just do this so that uh, they can now see that I'm doing. Be genuinely interested. This is what God will do. He will give you the opportunity to identify somebody who has that need. Then they will watch you. Whether you are consumed with personal pursuits, whether your totality of your life is about self-satisfaction, me, myself and I, the moment you pray for another the heaven open. See what the scripture says. And God remembered Job when he prayed for his friends. How do you call back a season of well-being? A season of all-round prosperity? It's not, oh God, please remember, Lord restore. No. Job looked at all the accusation of his friends. 
everybody came accusing Job of secret sin. They say God sees in secret. The best thing for you to do now is to repent. Because this kind of lot, they don't, they don't follow righteous men. Job prayed for his friends. That becomes a heavy weight. It becomes a sacrifice. You are praying on something and it has not received an answer. Identify somebody around your life who is buffeted with that challenge. Sometimes use your own last money and they say they are registering for something. You know it's not enough. You cannot do it for yourself. Carry it. Look for that brother. Look for that sister. And say, I'm sorry. I know it's not much, but I just want to contribute this for the cost of your introduction or your wedding. You see, the moment you are able to key into something that God is doing in the life of a person, you have joined yourself to that reality. You are trusting God for a job. And then somebody around you just sent you a text message and say, Ah, brother, rejoice with me. I just got a job with, let's say, NNPC or UNICEF. The average human heart will become envious, will become jealous. And the reason for it is that immediately he's thinking about himself and say, It could have been me. Why didn't this brother tell me when this opportunity opened up? Why didn't he tell me when there was an opening? The next message you will receive is, when did you apply for this thing? What the person is trying to investigate is, um, so something like this happened and only you did it for yourself. You know what you should have done? Look, look quickly look into your account. And say, brother, I know you are entering a new job and it will demand that you come looking sharp. It's not much. Take this 5,000 or go and buy a packet shirt and a straight trouser. Come and give it to him and say, just add this to your wardrobe. I know you will need it in this new season. You know what you have done? You have signed your way into that visitation. Anytime God is doing something for somebody around you, it is no longer a prayer point for you. If you are praying about something God has done for your brother, you are a proud man. God, God has opened that visit. This is why the ancients, this is why they erect altars. So that you don't, need, you don't need to suffer about that dimension twice. Anytime you come before that altar, there's a name they chronicled about God. There is something about God that that altar captures. So when you come there, they have defined your experience. It makes it easy for you to assess that dimension of God. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You are really trusting God for it. And then somebody just gives birth. The devil whispers in your ear and say, what is she feeling like? Meanwhile, anything you are looking for, you will see. If you are looking at somebody to begin to act somehow, every step they take will confirm your suspicion. It will just say, did you, did you observe the way she did her nose when, when she looked at me? <laughs> Nothing. You know what you should have done? Go and buy baby clothes. Quickly, come and say, madam, we thank God for what God has done for you. You know why? I repeat it again. If God has done something for anybody around you, it's no longer a prayer point. As at that point, the only thing you need, listen, look at me. Imagine somebody was able, in the ancient time, somebody was able to outsource fire. Is it necessary for you to go and start carrying stone and be trying to strike again to generate your own fire? No. You can share fire. You can take fire from here. You have seen that a procedure have brought a visitation. No need to start from the scratch again. Go and join that celebration. They think you can just take direct fire. I celebrate all my friends. Meanwhile, let me tell you one truth. <laughs> Sometime in 20, 2020, a friend of mine, 2020, a friend of mine bought a car. I was just at home in the evening and I, I, I just heard a message. It, it was the picture of the car he snapped and, and sent to me. He didn't write anything, he just sent the car. So when, when I saw the car, I now asked him that, has God, has God done it? He says, stay there now. <laughs> hey, stay there now. In, in, in other words, 
Déplé. You know what I did? I quickly went to my account, transferred 20,000 to him. I said, I know it's not much. Please use this and fuel. This is my little token to celebrate what God has done in your life. The brother saw the money and said, Meanwhile, I am the man of God. He is, he's, 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 he's just living for pleasure. He now saw it and said, He, 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 he declared. <laughs> In his mind, his stature is, is, our, is our spiritual ranking. <laughs> is the law, is the law of access. And, and see, I don't need you to like me to get what is in your life. You, me and you cannot like ourselves, but I can buy my way into your reality. It's, it does not, see, if I see that, if I see that you don't even want me to bless you, you know the next thing I'll do? I'll create a slope. You need to be spiritually intelligent. You come around somebody's life and you see certain move of God, certain visitation, certain realities that you desire. And the person is intentionally making sure that you never sow any seed in their life. You say, please help me with your account number. The brother did as if he didn't see it. You buy something and say, take. You say, God said I should not take anything for now. There is one way. See. Take that brother to be standing here and everything glorious about his life is like oil, oil upon him. Take you to be standing on this other extreme. As long as both of you are standing in this very flat platform, nothing from him can come to you because number one, he has set every structure to make sure that there is no link. You don't need him to like you. Bring yourself down. The moment you bring yourself down, oil that is here, will start flowing because of the slope that has been created. Listen, listen. Anytime a temptation to claim equality shows up and you know that there is something in that person's life that you desire, it will be spiritual intelligence to deliberately humble yourself before them. That particular action of humbling yourself is to create a slope so that they don't need to like you. It will be illegal for the oil not to flow. The moment a slope has been created. You know what you do? In their absence and in their presence. You speak highly of them. You sing their praise about what God has done for them. And you celebrate the God that remembers men like this. And if you want to top the icing. When they are around. Say that there must be something people like this have done to win the favor of God. <laughs> Before you know it. Meanwhile, the rest is history. third platform is fervent prayer. Fervent prayer. For want of time, God's willing, like I said on Tuesday, by the grace of God, we will try and assess some of these things. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just bow your heads quickly. Bow your heads. You are here and the current experience in your life which is the product of some seeds some seeds that you sowed yesterday in your ignorance now you are reaping the result of those seeds but you are not you don't like what you are reaping and the more you are seeing all kinds of unfavorable experience around your life and you want those things to change you know you have made some mistakes in yesterday you are not proud of. And the devil is hoping he will use those mistakes to ruin your today. To ruin your tomorrow. You are here and you are not proud of some of the decisions you have made. You have ignored God. 
you have walked in, in outright, outright rebellion to his laws and his instruction. And you want to say, Lord, please show me mercy. I don't want to reap the things that are the legal outcome of the things I have sown in my yesterday. You are here and you have given dishonor to a generation. And the devil is hoping to, to, to bombard you with the outcome of your mistakes. You are here and you have taken some steps that you know that you don't want to see the same in your life. You are here, my brothers and sisters. You want to say, Lord Jesus, I wave goodbye to everything that defines my yesterday. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. There is salvation in Jesus. There is a new beginning in Christ. You are here, you want to wave goodbye to the mistakes of the past. And you want to have a fresh slate with Jesus. Please run forward from wherever you are. Quickly, quickly. We are waiting for you. Just run. Don't wait. You know that this message is preparing you for a new season. And you know that this is the moment you are waiting for. Run forward quickly. Hey, hey, hey. My life must change. Aya, aya. Hey, hey, hey. My life must change. My life must change. Hey. My life must change. My life must change. Hey, my life must change. My life must change. My life must change. If any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, come to Jesus, come to him. Come to him and win. Win this great debate. Win this great contention for your stability. Come. I can now see Jesus face to face. No more, no more limitation. I can now see Jesus face to face, face to face, face to face. I can now see Jesus face to face. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone you have brought out. Thank you for your love that has drawn them to you. Thank you for everything you are set to counsel everything you are set to close and every season you are set to open in their lives take all the glory in the name of Jesus everybody please can you say this prayer with me from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I confess with my mouth your Lordship over my life and I believe in my heart that you died and rose again for me from today, I turn my back on sin and its consequences. From today, I walk in righteousness. I walk in the newness of life. Old things are passed away. And behold, everything is new for me. I am born again. I am a new creature. Congratulations. 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 God bless you. If you have prayed that prayer, congratulations. Please, please, listen. Listen. There will be attempts to initiate all kinds of seasons of compromise. I want you to hold on to what God has given to you tonight. There is a peace with God you have now. There is no more guilt. There is no condemnation. You are one with God. God has embraced you. 
all your mistakes have been swallowed up. You are a new creature in God. New seasons are opening up to you. When you leave this place, now walk in that consciousness. Amen. God bless you. And may the hand of the Lord that sustains, that keeps from falling, come strongly upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. You can go to your seats. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 While the meeting was ongoing, one of the fathers in the land, a man greatly used of God, who have been of immense support and blessing to us, walked in. And Akazo, with a round of applause, can we welcome Apostle Kenny in the house? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Amen. Listen, we have come to the end of our meeting. While the meeting was going on, my biological mother walks into the meeting. Please celebrate my mom. Celebrate my mom and Akazo. Amen. Please, please, let's listen to a few announcements before we go. Is there an announcement? Okay. Um, on Tuesday, by the grace of God, is our Congress, and it is a platform for communion and healing. We hold Congress at our center at um, Anguan Yelwa. Please make it a point of duty to clear your schedules and show up. On Friday is our Brothers and Sisters Forum. Such, such a marvelous encounter. For those of you who missed last week, Brothers and Sisters Forum, you, you, Kai, I don't know what to tell you. Come this week, Friday, and you will see what the Brothers and Sisters Forum is about. It's such a marvelous platform. On Friday, Brothers and Sisters Forum is holding still at the hall at our place at Anguan Yelwa. Please make our time and come on Friday as God is doing us well. God bless you. See you um, next week, Sunday, for another life-changing encounter. God bless you.